Although we're one man short of being the three amigos, um, we're going to take a walk and dive into some favorite memorable contacts we've made in our ham radio lives next on Live Free and Ham. All right. Hello and welcome to the Live Free and Ham podcast. Our bi-weekly show uh, explores ham radio topics in New Hampshire, New England and beyond. Uh, whether you're a regular listener or a first time guest, uh, we're excited to have you here. Uh, we appreciate all those uh, folks that have been listening uh, and your support. Uh, and as always, thanks for tuning into this week's episode. So let's get into uh, today's show. I'm uh, one of the hosts here. My name's Eric, call sign N1JUR. And I'm Todd, W1STJ. All right. And like I said, uh, one of our uh, other hosts is uh, away flying the friendly skies. Uh, we'll miss him in spirit, as, as always. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we will, uh, you know, hopefully he'll be back soon uh, and uh, be able to join the ranks again. So. Um, that's that's Ryan W one yes right so so we don't forget Ryan at all <laughs> for those that we you miss know, you Ryan we didn't we didn't axe him <laughs> this is not yeah. a Monty Python skit <laughs> all right so uh, just a couple of things uh, for housekeeping we just want to touch upon um, you know every month we actually uh, run a live stream so if you've uh, had a chance to catch our last live stream um, you'll definitely uh, enjoy this uh, up and coming one. Um, we will be having Lucas, uh, W1BTR on. He is the uh, developer and owner of the Minecraft mod called RadioCraft. So we're pretty excited mm -hmm. to uh, you know, have that uh, him on and have him uh, show some live demos and you know, talk. So uh, you know, definitely come along um, and uh, check it out. Um, and as the big announcement, we are gearing up for Nearfest. So those that uh, are in the New England area, New Hampshire specifically, um, you know, Nearfest is coming up in October for the fall segment. Um, we're working to to get ourselves there and to do uh, a similar live uh, show like we did uh, at uh, Ham Exposition. So definitely come by. We'll have some free swag, uh, maybe a couple of giveaways, but we're working all the details out. So stay tuned for that. Um, but, uh, you know, before we kind of dive into our uh, memory uh, treasure trove there, um, you know, what's been going on with uh, your ham radio uh, life there, Todd? Uh, not much. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't uh haven't done much ham radio lately. I, I've been extremely busy with uh I'm back to coaching uh baseball, so that was uh something I wasn't expecting to be doing this fall, but um somehow I got dragged into it. So I've been doing that again and uh work's been kind of busy. I've had a couple uh long, long nights, a lot of crazy days and uh but I have been, you know, when I work these overnights, I do uh, get into my flex and uh, make some contacts. So I've been making some contacts here and there, but nothing too uh, extravagant. And I have a lot of projects that have just been kind of put on hold that uh, hopefully I can start working on them when life uh, gets a little bit calmer. Uh, yes. Yeah. Hopefully winter will roll in and things will get a nice blanket of white and uh, things will start to slow down again that you can pick ham radio up. So cool. Yeah. I mean, the one project we did was put my antenna up higher. And, oh yeah. Uh, Dude, and we I, to, we're going to have to figure out time to do that before winter. <laughs> I totally but, forgot the other one. The, your, your, oh, the other, yeah. The your, other your one. Commander. But, <laughs> yeah. But the, the dipole is, uh, is up a little bit higher. It was kind of fell through the ice last year and it was a lot lower. Uh, we put it up and I was worried because I was getting, Really, in the middle of the night, I was getting good DX contacts to New Zealand and Australia, and I was really afraid if we went higher, maybe it would change that. It didn't. It actually made it better, and uh, I was yeah. on last night, and I was hitting California, which I never can hit California for some reason. <laughs> I mean, 5, 9, 20 plus. I mean, it was crazy. It was clear. I mean, it was the clearest I've ever heard anyone on the, on an HF band, wow. and I got two of them, so I was pretty impressed. So I think the antenna's in a good spot. <laughs> Uh, it sounds like it's working really well. I know uh, mine's even up 50 feet and, you know, I'm not, I'm barely scraping a, you know, a three, three out of a, you know, Arizona or a California contact. I, I get better range with FT8, but uh, yeah, good to hear on that one. That's awesome. Cool. All right. Well, so for me, I mean, obviously if uh, you were uh, watching this uh, on our YouTube, um, you'd see that I look like I'm living in a shanty behind me. Um, I'm in, still in the midst of uh, rebuilding a kitchen, so my shack office is kind of upside down um, and littered with all the kitchen utensils, but hasn't stopped me. Um, I'm still um, doing some other stuff. I mean, Saturday, uh, at the time of this recording, uh, we ended up having another POTA meetup uh, at uh, Bear Brook. It was totally a blast, although uh, we were... Uh, flanked by another, um, you know, uh, activity from another organization there at the pavilion. So we didn't get a chance to hit the pavilion, although the activity that was going on was a class reunion and the class reunion was 1973. So 
the people that walked by didn't ask if we were t- wearing tinfoil hats or what the heck you're doing with all those antennas. They understood that because in 1973 ham radio was pretty well, you know, popular and, and in the mainstream and, and, you know, there was a lot uh, in the news about that and, and stuff like that. So it, it was no surprise to them. And actually we actually had a couple of, uh, you know, hams who saw the stuff there and they super excited. They must have dropped whatever they're doing. They ran over and they were like, oh my gosh, what are you guys doing? And, you know, so we're explaining to them and like, oh, this is really cool. I'll have to come, you know, when my wife is, you know, busy tied up with all of her reunion friends to come over and operate. And so, you know, a couple of them did and, you know, some of them just came by and watched and a few families, you know, who weren't even a part of that, you know, saw what was going on and they were ha- asking questions. So I think overall it was another good, uh, you know, POTA meet up and, looking forward to it i know tim who uh you know casey one qdk who's been you know taking the reins on that is excited to start uh putting the you know the screws to another one and uh you know so hopefully we'll try to get that in before maybe winter um and go from there so you know that was uh definitely fun i ended up netting i think about 30 contacts after we finally sorted out all of other antenna issues and a few other things but uh, the band 20s was crazy i mean there was a um the vhf uhf contest going on on top of the european contest uh going on top of that so there was barely any space in the bands on top of you know there was probably 40 40 plus poda activations on the spotting page alone so it was it was quite busy it was you know i think i had netted probably maybe 15 or 20 park to parks just of that 31 contacts so it tells you how quick uh you know it was uh you know filling up uh in terms of the the dance card there so overall it was pretty good Oh, it's excellent. Yeah, I, I unfortunately I had to miss that again. Second one now. Baseball is killing me. But uh, but you know, it was. I'm glad you guys had a good time. I haven't activated a park in a long time. Um, a couple. God, I want to say it's almost been a month. It's like I'm Jones and they get out there. But the um, withdrawal. <laughs> yeah, I really am. I mean, I got all my stuff in my bag. It's ready to go. I just got to find the time to do it. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, but I'm glad that I'm glad the bands were good. And then that night, uh, which was last was it last night yeah Yeah. saturday night that's when uh 20 meters that's when i was hitting california and europe like there was no tomorrow so bands are definitely good this weekend looking good man i think you know by the time fall really gets into gear we're starting to see 10 meters peaking back up again and those contacts i'm looking forward to really you know i I never thought i'd be ever saying out of my own self that i'd be looking forward to 10 meters to being my favorite band but when that's open those contacts are freaking phenomenal so you know Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 whole entire solar cycles, you know, if this continues the way it is, I think we'll be in good shape for fall and maybe even to winter. So, you know, fingers crossed, knock on wood. Wait, me- remember when we were at that park and uh, we were doing 20, you were doing FTA and I was doing sideband and then I yeah. switched to 10 meters. 10 meters. Someone said, and I was like, Whoa, I'm like, look at all these contacts and people are like, thanks for doing 10 meters. That's a good yeah, segment. I, was, I mean, ultimately that was, I think that was one of one contact that you and I shared, you know, it's one of our yeah. favorites. But, uh, yeah. you know, so let, let's kind of segue into that a little bit. So, you know, we, uh, we're obviously one man down. Uh, as we said, Ryan uh, wasn't able to, to get, uh, you know, the time to, to come uh, on the show. And so we'll definitely miss him. But, uh, you know, um, we're going to, you know, continue to pick on, uh, pick up and move forward. So, you know, we're going to talk about some of our memorable contacts and, you know, and it doesn't really have to be specific to H yet, but I think a lot of the stuff that we're going to talk about tonight is, you know, around that. Um, and you know, it, it, they can be good, bad, indifferent, but, uh, and, or even funny stories. Cause I mean, we, we share a few and we've touched upon, I think in, you know, a couple of our early episodes where we said, you know, how we met and, you know, what we were doing in terms of the POTA and stuff and, um, you know, we could share some of, uh, those, uh, things around that, but, uh, so, you know, let's kind of dive into it. So, you know, let's start with, with the most memorable. So for you, you know, what, what would you bring to the table as your most memorable? Well, my most memorable contact was when I, back in 2020, when I was just a technician, I was on a HT and I had a mag mountain tent. I had a metal roof on my house and I had it sticking out the window kind of at an angle and uh what do they call it when the when the vhf skips or oh you had a yeah a prop um propag- uh, aurora skip yeah oh yes and everyone was talking about on the repeaters all day and so i was like oh this is going to be kind of cool so i went through and i would I'd, I'd be going through the channel and i'd hear someone and i'd look it up and I'm like oh this is a boston repeater maybe i can get them them because you know i could in the past and i make this contact and uh they're 850 miles away up in Canada. Uh, it was the Miramachi, Miramachi area VHF net. 
and <laughs> you were checking in <laughs> yeah i'm checking in in and out net uh september 9th 2020 um it was gary who sent me the qsl card and it wow. was uh ve9 gsb and uh i was like whoa it was like a wednesday at, at 9 p.m and i i honestly thought the guy was messing with me when i was talking to him he goes no you're he goes, you we're like 800 miles away from you and i'm like really oh, wow. i'm like how is that even possible so i was uh i was pretty psyched and i was like wow this is awesome i said this is must must be like what all those general guys do so that was my <laughs> that was my first experience of like i kind of want to get beyond these nets and this HT and, and what's, what's down the road. But I have to say that was, and, and you know, at the time I thought it was kind of cool, but when I, you know, a couple of weeks later, I got the card in the mail and I was That's like, sealed the deal. stoked. Yep. I was like, Whoa, I'm like, I, and it was on five Watts. I know that's on an insane. HT oh, with a mag mount on top of a roof. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I didn't even have my, my regular VHF antenna. I was like, damn, that's impressive. So yeah, that, that's my uh that's got to be my most memorable one um probably the coolest one because it'll probably never happen to me again i mean not on vhf i mean maybe it could, but <laughs> yeah, you're right it might have to be a calculated one but uh <laughs> it's yeah. not gonna be like the five watts and running on a paper clip and and, and what's funny is i guess what the guy was telling me is i think on this net they they turn the um the tone off when oh. they do the net okay so like, like how would i get on this net if i didn't even know what the tone no was way. right right you're, you're right right and <laughs> how would you that's open the <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I'm like, how is this going on? But I mean, heck, you know, yeah. we have a general problem when we're trying to hit our repeater, you know, on a good day. <laughs> right. I know. I'm in the same town as our repeater, and I can't hit it. But uh, <laughs> this guy's up in New, I think it's, what is it, New Brunswick, I think. Uh, yeah, is it New yeah. Brunswick, Canada? Yeah. Wow, dude, that's yeah, so impressive. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Nice tropo ducting, you know, long stream, you know, hey, just Todd's plugging in his frequency, and then boom, he's off. <laughs> Well, you know, and during the day, you know, people were talking about they were getting like New York, they were getting like New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Um, so there was like that was all the talk on the repeaters. And at that time, that's all I did was listen, scan and listen to repeaters. And so when I did that at night, I was like, did our net. And then I went around and started messing around and I found these guys just that's by awesome. luck. <laughs> It's totally awesome. <laughs> cool. I think I was doing HF. Like normally, like now how you do HF, I was doing on VHF. And I'm like, oh, here's a good station. <laughs> Let me check in. I know, right? <laughs> it's just bouncing the repeater to repeater. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, hey, so for me, I guess uh, my most memorable would have to be something that I was um, way back when I got my ticket, no code, which is 1991. So we're digging very far back. I was probably in my high school um, years, probably sophomore, junior. Um, I think at that point we had a, you know, I was part of like the first three established in the club to, uh, you know, it, be part of the ham radio, official ham radio club. And I think only one other kid outside of my brother who, you know, was in this club had his H, you know, basically HF privileges. So my brother and I were just no code tech. So, you know, we had an HF rig, but the club, the town club gave us the call sign for the school. So, you know, we could operate under the club's ownership, which was, you know, basically, you know, at an extra level or, you know, somewhere around that. I think it was advanced. And so right around that time, the big thing was the Space Shuttle Atlantis. And so that would always, you know, and in this time, it was like 1991. A lot of the technology that we have today in terms of tracking and all that stuff is was almost impossible to like, you know, find, you know, a computer, nevertheless, a really good HF piece of equipment to, you know, talk to the, the space shuttle. And so, um, this, you know, club gave the school, um, a radio, all well, the, the, um, electronics teacher gave us a small little room off the side of the architecture room in the shop area that had a door and, you know, no windows and whatever. So you could just basically, you know, turn up the radio, and not have to worry about it. And so space shuttle Atlantis would, you know, basically take off and that were the first or one of the first, you know, uh, missions to actually have um, astronauts at you know that had an HF radio on the the shuttle, and so there were passes that would go over from time to time. And everybody that I know, at least in the New England area, in terms of the trajectory and the time frames, you know, was always struggling to try to get to it. Um, to cut to the you know the, the chase, the long story uh, of it is that you know after finding the right window and skipping classes and doing all of the things you're not supposed to do as a student, because I never really was a good student. I was always in the radio room trying to, you know, make this contact because I was so like, I got to do this, you know, it's, you know, no problem. And my electronics teacher obviously saw the, you know, how passionate I was about it. So, 
you know, he, uh, there was one pass that was like coming over. That was the longest pass that was possible that you could get to maybe even try to make a, a conversation with the, the Atlantis. And so he's like, here, I'll give you a, a hall pass for your English class. And he it got me out of the test at the same time. So I got down to the radio <laughs> room and I spent like myself locked in that room. And I, you know, it was like magical. Like I, you know, reached out, they, they respond. I mean, I was yelling into the microphone to try to get them to hear me. And finally, after I hear on the other end, you know, them give us a call back. And it was like the simple exchange. It was like a five, you know, I don't even know what the you know signal report was. And I was like tripping over my words because I was like, just so enamored by the whole process of like, oh my gosh, they're actually responding back. And we also, we had as a simple vertical on the roof and, uh, you know, maybe, 50 watt or you know it's that back in those days they didn't even have 100 you couldn't get 100 watt you know hf rig because you know they weren't as popular or uh, you know what you could find today so you know i was screaming in the microphone and they finally came back and i got the confirmation and i was like totally ecstatic on you know on top of the moon and you know the whole nine yards it was just totally psyched because nobody else had it and so i guess my you know, a high school English, uh, high school electronics teacher obviously recognized that. And so all of a sudden the, you know, newspapers from the local town and Lowell and all of us coming in and gave the school publicity. And, you know, we we're on a couple of Lowell, uh, local, you know, TV stations and stuff like that in town and, and whatnot. And so it was, you know, it was very popular. And, you know, I, <laughs> I got tagged as the ham radio guy in school. So I just got used to the, you do what? What's ham radio? You know, the, you're the weird you're guy. Like, I, I talked to astronauts. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. <laughs> Even if I said that, it was like, you know, they're like, why would you want to talk to an astronaut? Because it's talking to an astronaut. <laughs> Come on, please. Who gets a chance to do that? And so, yeah, they, uh, they, they tagged us as like the weird science guys because we would always go into that closet and never come back out until hours later. And they, <laughs> they're like, don't go in that room. They're, you know, weird guys go in there. <laughs> and so, you know, but that was kind of what kicked it off. I mean, at that point, I was, you know, very much uh, like yourself. Uh, it just kind of cemented in the idea. It's like, I got to get my CW down, which never really happened. And, and, but I had field day to, you know, kind of still get my HF, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, feelings of, you know, making contacts all night long. I mean, they were, you know, there's the, some other stories I'll talk a bit about that, but, uh, yeah, that, that, that kind of just really set it me in motion. And then I took a 20 year break and got back into it. Like right where we are now. And, and now it's a, a life, life almost, happened. Families come around and then you yeah. came back. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Now, now I'm super addicted to HF and can't get enough of it. Well, you know, that's like, you know, I, I put in the, uh, international space station in my, uh, my two meter radio. And I'll, uh, sometimes I'll just monitor it and mm -hmm. especially if I know what's coming by and sometimes you can hear them. Wow. Um, I know that sometimes they talk to schools, but you can't hear the schools talking to them, but you can hear them if they're flying over. And, um, and I know that, uh, I know Tim does, um, he does some slow scan stuff and gets pictures from them. I guess the Russian cosmonauts are really into sending slow scan pictures, <laughs> but uh, at least that's what he said. And I've, I've seen it on YouTube too. Like that's, those are the guys that love to do that. But I'm like, oh God, I want to talk to one of those guys. Just like, imagine having a QSO with a be cool. guy that's floating around in the space station. Like, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, we we got to plan that. Let's start to do a live stream with it. Yeah. <laughs> have him as a guest. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Hey, can we coordinate a tie with you to be on our but, show? <laughs> but I think that I think that's what fascinates me about the ham radio is like, literally, I have a, a radio and a wire hanging up in some trees, to put it in layman's terms. And I can talk around the world. It's just, it, it just, it fascinates me. It's just amazing. And, uh, you know, that was for me, that con long distance, even though it was only 850 miles, but that's huge on VHF. That's, uh, dude, you were talking was... on a whip that was no longer yeah. probably like 30 inches, maybe max. I, I mean, know. and you're putting a civil 800 miles away. That's insane. <laughs> I know. And on five Watts. And at the time I didn't know what the difference between five Watts and a hundred. I, I mean, I had literally just got my, my technician license. So yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty exciting. And I think my second, well, what then kind of really hooked me is the field day that I didn't really participate in field day, mm -hmm. but you participated in field day and you said, you got to come by, see what it's all about. And I knew nothing. And I remember you guys putting up this, it looked like a rocket launcher, oh, this God. huge antenna. The of the antenna. And, yes. <laughs> and it, you get, you guys spent all this time, you had it up and everyone's doing it and it didn't work. And mm -hmm. so my wife was, so how was field day? I'm like, yeah, I don't get it. They, they put up all these antennas that don't work. And, I don't know. I said, but I, but I, I made a contact to Pennsylvania. I'm like, that was pretty cool. <laughs> and, 
And now I look at like, I'm like, oh, Pennsylvania. It's like, might as well know, talk right? to the next door neighbor. <laughs> it's like talking but, to Rhode Island. <laughs> but still, that was, and then my youngest, uh, Zach, he uh, he made a contact for the club as a non, right? It was non-ham yep. Yep. something. And he, what did he, I think he got Pennsylvania too. And I, He might have gotten a little farther, but let's go back and look. I yeah. know he was, yeah. he was surprised. Yeah. But yeah, so that was kind of like, oh, I should probably start really now looking into this. Uh, and then Eric pulled me in and basically said, you're getting your general on this day and it's in two weeks. You better start. <laughs> you better start. Crash. Two weeks. It was probably like a you know month away, I think, at that point. But uh, well, I had been <laughs> studying, but, you know, I wasn't really getting into it. And then I'm like, oh, I'm like, if I don't pass, these guys will never let me hear the end of it. Uh, dude, you know, you don't have to pass with 100, thank God, because, you know, uh, nobody ever goes by and goes, hey, did you uh, pass with a 99 or 100? It's like, did you get your ticket? Yeah, you got a ticket. Well, that's a, well, that's it, a party. <laughs> On both my tests, on both my tests, when I was doing the practice test, I did better on the real test than I did on any practice test. Like, I think I only got two wrong on the Not general, bad. but like, I would get like three or four or five wrong every time. Like, I would just be like, eh. so, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, and then after that, you know, after I got my general, we went out to lunch and then you and I were driving home. You go, you want to go do a park? And I was like, eh. I'm like, yeah, I guess it was my first POTA activation. And I was so nervous because I didn't know how to say. I do remember that, dude. I do remember talk. That. And I was like messing it all up. And oh, like, so oh, do I, I give him five nine or do I give him the park number or do I like, you know, do I say QSL? Do I say QRZ? You know? Yeah, <laughs> was I was like a mess. <laughs> well, you know, and you, you go back and think about that. It's like that's none of the stuff they teach you on the test on how to really operate. I mean, they tell you the rules, but they don't really. I always said, like, it would be nice that when you're studying for the test, like you get like a learner's permit right. and you can, you can activate like, I don't know, just well, practice. Like, I guess other like, you know, like over in Europe and the, the RSGB, they do like, you know, you get to operate in those bands, but they, but they test you against the actual like functional, like, Hey, how do you handle a QSO? And that's part of their testing, you know, exam yeah. versus just like, Hey, this is the theory. And if you know, you know, how to study to questions that are multiple choice, then you're going to pass. Yeah. And we, and like, we don't have that. So that was, that's like the hands-on learning. It's kind of like I say, like with work, you know, you can go to school and get all the education you want, but you really learn your, your career by experience and actually doing the job. Right. Exactly. Yep. I so, all right. So let's, let's kind of break it. So what would you, you have a, uh, you know, we talked obviously most memorable and we touched upon a few there, but like, what would be your, like, do you have a most difficult one that just like the, the crap at the fan, everything was just, you know, one of those things that just like, it was a no good, horrible, rotten day, you know, that you know, still sticks out in your head or, you know, actually you, I think you had one early and you, you may want to touch upon the coax, you know, in Vermont, I think <laughs> triggers one of my thoughts. <laughs> what, when I, with Poda? Or just, yeah, just well, in general, like in terms of like going out to a, you know, event, you know, it always oh, happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I planned the day. I said, all right, I'm going to go out in the morning. I'm going to drive out to Vermont. I brought my oldest son. He sometimes likes to go out and do them with me. We get out there. I found this park. It was perfect. We paid, we get in there. I get it all set up and no coax. <laughs> and I think I talked about this on a previous you podcast did, right? yep. and I was like, oh, and then I'm like, I mean, it's Vermont. Like, there's nothing really anywhere yeah. near that I could even I get coax to kind of <laughs> jimmy rig it up. So I came back two weeks later and, and did that park. But I was determined to get that park activated. I'm like, I got, I can't not do it. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think one of my other contacts that I thought was pretty memorable was uh, when I made my first true DX contact contact outside of North America. So I didn't consider Canada. In the United States, like that's to me is not even though some people say, "Oh, Canada's the." I don't think it is. Mm -hmm. That's just my opinion. But I got my first guy, and he was my sixty-first uh, HF contact, and he was from Slovenia. Now, at the time, I didn't even know Slovenia even existed or where the hell it was. <laughs> I probably it. heard of it, but you know, I'm like ah, Slovenia, Yugoslavia. And it's like what are those? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it was a guy named Slavko. And his call sign was, uh, let me see, it was S57DX, so Sierra 57 Delta X-ray. Wow. And uh, we had a QSO, and I had told him, I said, you're my first DX contact. And we were talking, and I had said, you know, I'm just starting. And, um, you know, I asked him how he's doing and good. And then uh, 
couple days later, I'm messing around the radio and I picked them up again and because of logging. And I, at first I didn't realize it was because of logging. He goes, Oh, my New Hampshire friend. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like, this work. guy remembered me. <laughs> but now that I know it just pops up on the computer and he says, Oh, I worked you last week. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> so yeah. So that was kind of, that was kind of a, that was kind of a, a you know, that's when you remember when you when you get out there. You know, and of course I run around and run upstairs and tell my wife, I just talked to this guy in Slovenia. She's like, big deal. I could just pick up the phone and call him. I'm like, yeah. Ah, we're working her over sooner enough. Yeah. She keeps yeah. listening to these podcasts. She might <laughs> actually right. become a ham. It's funny, not to sidebar too much, but uh, you know, I don't know if Tim's listening, but uh, Tim's wife, uh, Kim, was behind me while I was operating, and I turned to her, I'm like because Tim was all the way on the opposite side of the field for doing CW. And I turned, I'm like, you know, you've been with us for long enough. You know, what's keeping you from getting your ticket? And she's like, uh, you know, kind of giving that him. I'm like, there's no, uh, it's like, you know, let's surprise Tim. Let's not tell him you're going to get a ticket. And then one night you can just take the microphone from him and he'll be like, what's going on? You can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. And if she's like, you know, let me put my call sign out there. And, you know, <laughs> just leave it at that. And I think, you know, we'll, we'll have to encourage her in that way. What, what, she's, what she's saying to that. Maybe. No. I'm like, no, well, we'll work this one out. I'll let you, I'll, I'll yeah. sit with you for a little bit. You know, I'll come back and we'll try, you know, I'll try again later. And, you know, you've been with us. I mean, you're literally like uh, or indoctrinated into the club at this point. So it's like, you know, why not yeah. just get your ticket? You know, you'll have fun with it. I guarantee it. So, but anyway, that's a nice segue. But uh, yeah, I would say, Context, for, like I'm trying to think what would be one of the greatest ones that I did. The only one I can think of was my very, like if we're talking DX. For me, one of the ones I tried that I got very quickly that I just didn't really know that I had would have been, and I'm looking back at my logs, was like the one, the first one came to you and actually confirmed, I actually just realized this now, was a contact in Ireland. Like now at that time, let me frame out, I had a Yezu FT450, which is a very beginner radio, good radio, had DSP in it. I had a MFJ 1982 antenna. Now, everybody who knows those antennas, they're cheap, but they're meh, they're garbage. <laughs> you know, over a long period of time, they fall apart. They're not really great. So I had put it up like maybe at 20 feet. So I think when I hit that contact and looking at my notes in my log, I was like, that was my first sideband contract. Now it was a 3-3 and I did a simple exchange with him. And, you know, I haven't worked him since if I go back in and look, but, you know, like Italy is exactly how you, ex you know, expressed earlier. It's like, you know, you wanted to run up and tell your wife or, you know, tell everybody. And they're like, yeah, Italy, whatever. <laughs> it's like, but I worked hard to get there. You know, <laughs> I think I had to like, listen, I had to like tune it in. I had to, you know, do all of this, you know, heavy lifting to, to finally get my voice out there. And then when he heard it, it's like, yeah, yeah, he's got it. Let's go. This is awesome. You know? So, you know, it's like those contacts, like you shared, it's like, it, they, they are, they're always going to be cemented in our mind. And I'm sure we'll have a boatload more as we continue to, play in the flex world because it just makes it easier for some reason i don't know why but <laughs> yeah i don't know why either but i've been getting a lot more contacts with my flex radio than i've ever had and i think it's just because of convenience you know like i can, <laughs> and, and I can it's just a, turn yeah. it up it's just wherever <laughs> i'm at i can do it it's literally right in front of you and you can do it well, and you're all good you know well, no one, of, one of the uh, guys in our club ray who is uh he i call him like the antenna king because oh, if yes. you look in his uh his backyard if you look up it's like a spider web of, of dipoles <laughs> oh, it's, it's, yeah it's insane right I, I mean that's the best way to, to explain it. but he he would text me and he goes oh my friend from italy now his it's just a ham radio guy that he's had contact with a thousand times or whatever right and he goes you got to try to work him so I, you know i tried for like a week because this guy would get on and he'd have huge pileups and i wasn't getting in and then like one day like a week into it i got him and i called ray i'm like oh, ray i got him i finally got him in the lot <laughs> and his names or something like that i can remember yeah. exactly how ray referred to yeah. him <laughs> yeah yeah but uh but yeah it, and it's like now it's like you know italy is i get a lot of italy's like they, they have a big ham uh oh, yeah. community over in italy especially like when i'm doing poda like typically if i'm doing poda and i'm gonna get a dx contact while activating a park nine out of ten times it's coming from italy mm -hmm. yeah there's at least that's, that's my experience <laughs> Echo Alpha is the one I'm thinking of. There's one that I get all the time on Poda, and let me see if I can dig up his call. That now you should trigger my thoughts. Echo Alpha, one um, man. Where is his call sign? I always see it. Oh, but like you know, it's, it's not a DX contact. But there's one guy that when I hunt all the time, and uh, I share this with you. His, his name's called his first name's Charlie, and uh, no Bruce. Why did I say Charlie? I'm looking at something else. His name is Bruce, and his call sign is. Uh, kilo uh one india charlie papa 
And I can't tell you how many times, every time I activate, it's literally like he's hunting me directly. If I go into my POTA stats, I have more contacts with just him alone every time I go POTA activating. And it could be horrible in terms of bands. And actually, I was down in Arlington like when the band conditions were bad two weeks ago. And lo and behold, Kilo One India Charlie Papa. And it's like, Bruce, how's it going, buddy? And it's like, you know, we have like this, like we've been two brothers lost, you know, separated by two mothers. And it's like, you know, I've never seen, you know, outside of on QRZ, you know, mm -hmm. him, his picture in his shack and stuff like that. But, you know, it's like that the kindred spirit thing, you know, it's like, hey, you know, I, I hear you. I know your voice. I know your contact, you know, and, you know, it's good to be able, you know, reunite for those five warm minutes that, you know, you make a contact with and move on. Well, you know, I, it's funny you say that, like when I was doing a lot of activations in a short period of time, like multiple times a week, constantly getting on, I was going down to Florida, getting on, I was down in Mississippi, getting on, I was coming up here doing it. I would get a lot of the same guys who were also active. A lot of the park to parks are the same people and they're on every night. Like some people do it every night oh, God, and, God. Um, and they start recognizing you and you start recognizing them and uh, all right, I'll get you on 17 tomorrow or <laughs> whatever. So that's kind of, yeah, it's it, kind of it, cool. It's like, you know, I mean, how many times did you and I, when we first started playing, when like K murder would hop on K at MRD would hop on, you'd be like, Oh dude, I got to work them. I got to work them. Yeah. And, you know, it was just, yeah, like, I've oh, worked up half a dozen times now. <laughs> right? like, yeah. I could go in my look of it. I'm like, yeah, K murder's on a grid. Let's go, let's move something different. You know? So yeah. like I, I created a, you know, a, a, my hunt for YouTubers list on my website. And it's like, literally I'm picking people off one by one. And it's like, it's he, he's, he should be an easy one. Cause he's always on. Well, he's got his technician nights and he's doing FT8. So it's like, yeah. you know, you see him come across the ham alert and you're like, Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm busy. Oh, doing remember, time. we had the FT8 off. I beat him once. <laughs> yes, you I did. Like, uh, I did. <laughs> I let you know. I'm like, I beat him. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, I think he was just getting into FT8. So, yeah, you did have he an price. He probably smoked me now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the point, I'm sure with the 7610 and all the stuff that uh, he goes into, uh, you know, so yeah. I, I, I like hunting those folks. I mean, they aren't like super DX in my mind, but like, hey, when you make a contact with them, you know, it, it kind of gives you a self of, uh, you know, self uh, pride thing. And you're like, okay, cool. I'm, you know, moving on. I know my radio can do its job and, you know, I can pick those guys out of a, a deep, uh, you know, signal, uh, you know, SNR noise issue and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Well, so, you uh, know what, what's, what I like to sometimes do is I, I'll just go on my log and my log will have like, you can get like stats and see, and yep. just see all the different countries I've worked. Like you don't realize all the countries that you've worked over a couple year period. It's like, Holy crap. Like I, I worked that country three times and like, I don't have a lot in, I don't have a lot in Africa. I've got a few and yeah. I've only got like a very few in um, the middle East. Like for some reason, the middle East is I have more on FT8 than I do sideband. But uh, so those are the ones. And then I never had Australia or New Zealand until just recently. And that's been like my, now yeah. it's like for me in the middle of the night to get Australia, New Zealand is like me getting Italy on a, on a port activation. So, <laughs> so like, you, that's you, Australia again. You've got N3F JP, right? You're, that's what you use for yeah. logging. Go into yeah. uh, just, you know, let's do a little quick test here. Go into your wards real quick and um, set your mode and band to like 20 meters and sideband and then just do a uh, calculate. Tell me what f five continents you've already worked. All right, so, what do I do? I go into. Oh, so, yeah, you're in awards. And yeah. then once you do, do awards, uh, you're going to pick uh, states, countries, you know, et cetera. Yeah. And, and change your band to 20 and mode to sideband and then hit calculate. All right. Sideband. All right. Where is the calculator? Oh, there we go. And so what up do you want to know? Yeah. So yeah. up at the very top, how many states have you worked? Uh, There should be a number right next to work states. Yeah, it only says 33, but I've worked more than that. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, all right. And then, so go to your continents. What, how many continents have you worked so far straight that you have enough contacts to actually get an uh, award for working contents? Oh, this is just awards? Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, I only got four, but it doesn't show Australia. Oh, not yet. No, that's a bummer. So, but yeah. If so I go down, let's see if I go down. But down here, I've got Australia. Like, if yeah. you go... So how many countries have you worked total out of the three? 100, 191. Holy wow. I'm only at 37. So you blow the doors off me on that one. Oh, no. I'm sorry. That's counties. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. 
counties yeah. are like of 900, but <laughs> yeah. So where are you at with countries? Um, two, 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 one, two, three. This isn't accurate. It only says six. Oh, but wow. like I've worked Alaska. Have I've you worked... imported all of your other uh, stuff from your flex in the, into your log yet? Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, weird. So I don't know. I got to look at this. I, I never even looked at this. Yeah. So these are all the yeah, things. Because it says uh, I have 334 left. Okay. So I got about but, 37 worked out of 330. Yeah. Like I, like I worked the Antarctica. Mm-hmm. And that one says I didn't work it, but I did. Oh. Oh. <laughs> because it was the uh remember we did ft8 and yeah antarctica was on there yep yeah iceland and all that too yep yeah i got mm-hmm. iceland wow yeah so if i go if i look into my oh QR Twitter, if i look into well no if i look into let's see view and then i go into statistics all right so uh so country like it just it doesn't show you, but it shows all the different countries. I mean, it's just like it goes on and on and on. Like oh, yeah. the Gambia. Like what is the Gambia <laughs> or Suriname? Yeah. Norfolk Island. I know where that is. Martinique, Malta, Isle of Man. Yep. What right? I've you ever that? You ever, I've worked yeah, on Ghana, yeah. Guadalupe, Guam, El Salvador, Crete, China, Bolivia. I worked Antigua and Barbuda. I yeah, I got them too. Antigua and Barbuda. So those are two. I've been to Antigua. Those are two islands in the Caribbean that are actually one country. Oh, so wow. they're two countries. It's kind of like states. Like they're two islands, but they're governed by one government. And here's Antigua. Antarctica. Do you have Kingdom of Eswatini? <laughs> I have no idea where the heck that is. <laughs> Kingdom of Kingdom. <laughs> No. Oh, that's weird. So I. Uh, Let's see. I'm trying to find where are the some of the, uh, oh, the yeah, like, like some of them are like it's like European Russia, then there's Asian Russian, um, okay. Cuba. I got a ton of Cuba, Switzerland. Some of the smaller ones, like I've got, um, there's Slovenia, Northern Ireland, U.S. Virgin Islands, Belize, uh, Luxembourg. So yeah. Luxembourg's a tiny little country. You know what I want to get is, uh, where was Princess Grace from Monaco? I don't have Monaco. Yeah, that I would be a cool one to have because that's like one of that in the Vatican. The Vatican's the smallest legal country in the world. I know. Actually, I do have Monaco. I have Monaco and Morocco. Hmm. I must have hit it. One or two well, people. Mon- it. <laughs> They're kind of near each other. I mean, Mo- Monaco's in France and Morocco's just. Um... So here's a here's a little statistic. If you scroll down in that same list, there's a, a line that says total DX miles. What's your average miles per DX QSO? What's that number? Look um, like? Four thousand one hundred and five. Oh, dude, you blow the doors off me. I'm only at thirty three hundred seventy six. <laughs> well, that's because I've been getting all those Australian <laughs> and New Zealand. Like they're like it says my uh, my QSOs. It's a total DX miles QSOs in US not counted. Ten million five hundred ninety eight thousand nine hundred forty two. Wow! Holy crap! <laughs> Ten million miles. <laughs> that's, that's huge. <laughs> I know. And that's only what is that? What did I start to that? That's only two years of being a general. So yeah, dude, you had been doing your haul and kicking butt. That's for sure. Yeah. See, this is the stats. Like, you know, you should need to share with your wife to say like, Hey, these are actually like, can you yeah. your dial on your phone and prove that you picked up and had a phone number call with this person? In so, this country? So she got, she got me a, a map and it's like one of those, you know, like a scratch ticket. Yeah. And I have to scratch off every country. You've done that yet. And she's all, no, nah, cause it's just sitting up there and I'm like, you know, it's going to take me like a month, a week of Sundays to <laughs> get that off. done. Like half the world's going to be scratched off. Yeah. Mine's over in the corner in a frame. So there's no way I'm going to be able to scratch it. <laughs> yeah. So I think like maybe one day if I get COVID or something else and I can't go to work, I'll just sit in the dining room scratching. <laughs> be like, you know, you're in prison marking the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, cool. But awesome. Well, hey, you know, so let's kind of, you know, wrap this up. So any other like interesting contacts or, you know, you know, stuff that uh, it's memorable to you that, you know, you've gone through that uh, you want to kind of mention as a honorable mention? <laughs> you know, I, I think it's also cool. Like when you and I worked uh, park to park, you were in Vermont. I think I was in, was I in Mississippi oh, yeah, dude, or Florida? Yeah, I totally that was kinda, Right. That was kind of cool that you and I worked to park to park and that well, was, even, uh, 
even the one that I went to Florida and I was operating off yeah. the coast, you know, you were like coming in like five, eight. And then, you know, the next person right after that was K murder. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was right after You're number one. Probably, yeah. He probably listened to me talking to you. Like, Maybe. Who's this guy talking to his buddy or something. Yeah. Oh, actually, I got one more. We'll, we'll give uh, Ryan okay. uh, a, uh, he, he's part of this one. So Ryan, uh, Ryan, we were on 10, he, he texted me and he was over Iceland flying and he's like, Hey, I'm on this frequency. See if you can reach me. And I get on the radio. I go to the frequency and boom, there he is. So we're having this QSO. Nice. So he was 45,000 feet up doing like, I think it was like 700 miles an hour That's insane. That's awesome. in a, in a, in a <laughs> Gulf stream jet. So I get on my app, um, flight aware where you can track airplanes. So I'm looking and then all of a sudden I find him. I take a, a screenshot and I send it to him. I'm like, I think I found you. <laughs> he goes, yep, that's me. That's where I'm at. That's so, awesome. yeah. So we did a, we did a, uh, I guess that's a DX contact. Uh, he was in, he was flying over Iceland and yeah. we, uh, we're on too, isn't it? I think you got both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, that was kind of a cool one too. I mean, it's kind of cheating cause he told me like he was on there, but he, yeah, he so wanted to see it work. <laughs> you know, he was, well, that was another one. I ran up. I'm like, I go, Diane, Diane. I go, I got Ryan on this. She goes, yeah. So I'm like, no, he's flying in the airplane. He's like over Iceland. <laughs> yeah yeah go back downstairs <laughs> and she's like she goes don't they just fly like airplanes like that like don't don't they use the radio to talk to the i'm like yeah but it's just different different channels different <laughs> yeah. functionality they don't really share much except that hey i'm gonna be landing here <laughs> or taking yeah. off so yeah cool so yeah that was kind of fun uh, you know i enjoyed uh, walking down memory lane and talking about some stuff while uh you know one of our uh, best buds was uh away but uh, i'm sure he would have probably had a ton of contacts i know he's uh, shared a few with us that uh you know uh, definitely struck a chord so yeah overall I, I had pretty much uh, good fun there and uh you know hopefully uh our listeners did too and you know hey if, if you're uh, listening to this you know definitely comment we'd love to you know hear you know, what your best you know contact was you know what one of your most memorable ones are whether you're a kid or as an adult or just something you had last week you know definitely share you know be part of the community let us know um and as uh you know we kind of wrap up here you know um thanks for joining our uh, live free in hand podcast you know if remember if you haven't subscribed uh, you can always connect with the show. Uh, we definitely love the uh, reviews. If you can head over to iTunes, if you're an Apple listener, leave a review there. We'll definitely, if you leave a you know comment, we'll make sure we lead, uh, read it on the next show. Um, you can always contact us with or connect with us, I should say, on social media. Check, uh, get the most latest information, shows, and content. And as always, um, definitely, uh, we need the help supporting our show because we're trying to just reach out more into the community and get more people, uh, you know, in front of ham radio and uh, learning more. Um, and uh, you can always use our Patreon and buy us beer links that are in our, all of our show notes and on our website as well. Um, and if you want to contact any of our hosts, you can always head over to livefreeandham.com. Uh, and with that, uh, thanks again for listening. Um, and for all of us at Live Free and Ham, 7-3. 7-3, guys. Thanks. Sweet.